the Los Angeles Lakers' best time to trade for Anthony Davis is now. And with the NBA trade deadline looming Thursday, they're starting to get down to business. The Lakers have had multiple conversations with the New Orleans Pelicans on Monday about a trade for Davis and have offered them a revamped trade package for the all-star big man, ESPN's Adrian Wojnarowski reported Monday. The Lakers have offered a new package to New Orleans that includes multiple young players, multiple draft picks and Pelicans salary cap relief for Anthony Davis, league sources tell ESPN. The offer appears to move closer to the objectives that the Pelicans are pursuing in a deal, Adrian Wojnarowski, at which Espen, February 4, 2019 Lakers President Magic Johnson and Pelicans GM Del Demps have had multiple conversations today, league sources tell ESPN. There's no sense how much progress sides have made progress toward a possible trade, but the Lakers have absolutely gotten more serious in the discussions. https colon slash slash t dot co slash r 84 v 9 n 3 Adrian Wojnarowski, at which Espen, February 4, 2019 Wojnarowski didn't reveal the specifics of the Lakers offer, but it still seems like a step up from LA's initial pitch of Lonzo Ball, Kyle Kuzma, Rajon Rondo, Michael Beasley and a first-round draft pick. More Celtics, Celtics not on Davis's long-term destinations list Unfortunately for the Lakers, both of these offers arguably are inferior to what the Boston Celtics can promise the Pelicans if general manager Del Demps decides to wait until this summer to deal Davis. Boston has four first-round picks in the 2019 NBA draft and a number of talented young players like Jalen Brown, Terry Rozier and Jason Tatum. The Celtics can't trade for Davis before the February 7 deadline, however, so this is the best opportunity for Davis's agent, Rich Paul, to team the 25-year-old with his most high-profile client, LeBron James, in LA. Sees fans will be hoping Demps and Co. Don't take the bait. Update 4 p.m. Eastern Time, the Los Angeles Times' Brad Turner has the specifics on the Lakers' trade proposal. It's hefty. Landed in Indy, update on Lakers-Pelicans talks. Magic Johnson, Del Demps talk twice today, per source. Lakers willing to give Pelicans cap relief for Anthony Davis by taking Solomon Hill for Lonzo Ball, Kyle Kuzma, Ingram, Rondo, Lance Stevenson, Beasley, two first-round picks, Brad Turner, at Ba underscore Turner, February 4, 2019 Lakers now waiting on Pelicans go respond, per source. But it's all that the Pelicans wanted to trade AD. Young talent from Lakers, cap relief and draft picks, Brad Turner, at Ba underscore Turner, February 4, 2019 Click here to download the new My Teams app by NBC Sports. Receive comprehensive coverage of your teams and stream the Celtics easily on your device. Boston, success in the NBA often comes down to how well you establish position, and leverage that position to your advantage. We are seeing that push and pull game being played out before our eyes involving the NBA's true big three. Agents, players and teams, the latest chapter in this never-ending narrative centers around Anthony Davis, who wants out of New Orleans, and Davis, or is it his reps, focused on taking his otherworldly talents to the Los Angeles Lakers. Superstars wanting to play in Los Angeles is nothing new, we say it with Paul George, who wanted Indiana, to swing a deal with the Lakers, only to wind up being traded to Oklahoma City and later re-signing. With the Thunder, more Davis, report, Celtics not on AD's list of long-term destinations We saw Paul George 2.0 with Kawhi Leonard's camp trying to get him from San Antonio to the Lakers or the Clippers. The Spurs weren't trying to hear that, working out a deal instead with the Toronto Raptors, who shipped out the franchise's all-time leading scorer DeMar DeRozan for Leonard. This is Leonard's first season with the Raptors, but Toronto has been among the top two or three teams in the NBA with Leonard entrenched in the league MVP conversation. That brings us back to Davis, whose camp is trying to do what so many others have failed to do in the past, get their client to a preferred destination while the team he plays for, New Orleans, takes a deal that's likely not the best one it can land, and that's the problem with most Davis-related reports centered around him going to the Lakers. 
When you start examining rosters, there are a number of teams that have assets that, frankly, would trump what the Lakers could put together, and yes, the Celtics are among those teams. Still, the teams that are in position roster-wise to make a legit run at him, and who can provide the kind of return the Pelicans should be seeking, young talent, picks and potential salary cap relief, are hesitant because Davis, or is it his reps, continue to feed the narrative that there are only a handful of teams he will re-sign with if a team trades for him now. Here's the problem with that premise, it assumes that whatever team Davis gets traded to, can't build or provide a culture that will make him want to stay long-term, for a guy who has been to the playoffs just twice in his seven-year career, you're telling me that playing on a team that gets to the conference finals or NBA finals, wouldn't be enough to sway him to want to stick around with that franchise long-term? If that's true, then Davis, or is it his reps, isn't looking at his next move to better position himself to win, more Celtics, can seize follow Pat's lead, and he damn sure isn't looking out for what's in the best interest of the Pelicans. What can't be ignored in all this, is the long-term impact of the Pelicans potentially got a good player, or is it his reps, who no longer wants to be part of their franchise and take a deal that's not in the best interest of the franchise. The Pelicans have made it clear that their focus is on finding the best deal and they won't be nudged in one way or another as far as which franchise they come to terms with, although we are disappointed in this decision, our organization's top priority is to bring an NBA championship to our city and fans and build our team for long-term success, read a statement from the Pelicans shortly after Davis's trade request. Relative to specific talks of a trade, we will do this on our terms and our timeline. one that makes sense for our team and it will not be dictated by those outside of our organization. It sounds good and certainly plays well with their fan base, which has to have some serious doubts right about now as to whether the Pelicans brass will make this right. The deals that have been reportedly made to the Pelicans from the Lakers, as of now, may very well indeed be the best offers on the table. Still, that isn't what should be on the Pelicans' minds right now. It shouldn't be about the best deals you've received, but the best deal you can get, and there is no question that the Pelicans can get as good or a better deal after July 1st than they can prior to the Thursday trade deadline, whether it's from the Celtics or another team. Sure, Boston Boston will then be in play as an option with Kyrie Irving a free agent, and still more likely to re-sign with the Celtics than not, and no longer bound to the obscure NBA rule which prohibits him and Davis from being on the same team because of their contracts, this season. However, there's no guarantee Boston will put forth the best package of players and picks to get the deal done. At the end of the day, there's more at stake than a new basketball home for Davis, the potential for New Orleans to knowingly accept the lesser deal between now and Thursday is real, accepting such a deal while knowing that same deal will be there in July as will more potentially better offers, would only validate some of the harsh words of criticism levied at Pelicans GM Del Demps from former NBA Commissioner David Stern. And it would open a Pandora's box of problems for teams with players in the future who would try a similar approach to try and leverage teams away from potentially dealing for them, and shrink the pool of possibilities to whatever they deem is an ideal landing spot. In the end, the Pelicans have to keep their word and do what's in the best interest of the franchise, Morsi's crunch time is Kyrie time and that would be to wait to strike a deal after the Thursday trade deadline, no matter how badly Davis, or is it his reps, want him in Los Angeles with LeBron James, click here to download the new My Teams app by NBC Sports. Receive comprehensive coverage of your teams and stream the Celtics easily on your device. Boston, the Celtics have been in the middle of an identity crisis most of this season, vacillating between being dominant some nights and dormant others, still, they've seemed to have found their stride lately and in doing so, have strung together four consecutive victories and won nine of their past ten. We know of another team that had similar early season hiccups that caught fire at the right time and, lo and behold, were the last team standing when all was said and done. Yes, we're talking about the Super Bowl 43 champion Patriots, a team that the Celtics can certainly learn a thing or two from when it comes to winning big, more Super Bowl, defense and Edelman shine to bring Patriots sixth title. One of the first lessons for success involves finding something that works and sticking with it over and over. Until it doesn't work anymore, we saw that play out in New England's 13-3 Super Bowl win over the Los Angeles Rams. The bulk of the Patriots' lone touchdown drive centered around them calling the same play over and over again, because Bill Belichick and company realized the Rams could not stop it, at all. Another important lesson involves taking care of the teams you're supposed to beat, more times than not. That's why, despite Cleveland's horrific record, 11-42, Tuesday night's game should qualify as yet another measuring stick-type matchup for them. 
Yes, the Cavs are one of the worst teams in the NBA and just traded away one of their better scorers, Rodney Hood, to Portland for scraps better known to most as second-round draft picks. Cleveland is in full-blown rebuilding mode, some would call it tanking, and have no business being able to compete, let alone beat the Celtics on Tuesday night, so why the hell is this a measuring stick game? Because this game isn't about the challenge presented by the Cavs. It's about the challenge from within, a challenge that pits Boston's growth this season against human nature which tells them, and tells all of us, frankly, that this should be one of Boston's more lopsided road wins this season. The Patriots opened the season with losses in two of their first three games, bringing out a chorus of boo birds and doubters about this team's chances to advance to the Super Bowl, in those times, you constantly heard. Tom Brady and Belichick deliver an on to the next game message with the focus being more on them improving from within, than whatever is going on outside their locker room or going on with their opponent. They would go on to win 10 of their next 13 regular season games. Which brings us back to the Celtics who are, like the Patriots after a slow start, starting to play some of their best basketball right now. Boston, 34-19, has won four in a row and nine of the last ten with the lone defeat being to two-time defending NBA champion Golden State in a game that wasn't decided until the final minute. Knowing what the Celtics know about the Cavs and what they've been learning about themselves lately, avoiding a letdown becomes the greatest challenge at this point in the season. No need to worry about Terry Rozier being motivated for Tuesday night. I'm from around that way so I want to destroy them, said Rosier, who grew up in Youngstown, Ohio. I think we all feel the same way. We've been going up, that's our mindset. No matter who we're playing, we just want to keep that pace and play with energy, Marcus Smart echoed similar sentiments about facing the Cavs, they're still a team, with young guys and they'll come out hungry, Smart said. Their record is upsetting and frustrating to them. We can't come in and play them for their record. We have to play them as a team, like we do other guys in this league and come out and own what is ours. It sounds good, but we have seen this Celtics team far too often this season come into games like this and deliver some of their least inspiring efforts. Still, it comes back to growth which, on paper at least, sides with the Celtics. Remember how they got off to a 10-10 start? The record was disappointing, for sure, but the true bummer in their bad start was the fact that they were getting beat by bad teams. Within their first 20 games this season, the Celtics had 10 games against teams that, at the time of their matchup, had a sub-0.500 record, Boston's record in those games. The Celtics were 4-6, the kind of underwhelming start to the season that led many to view Boston as one of the league's biggest disappointments, however, Boston has rebounded quite nicely since then with an impressive 18-1 record against sub-0.500 teams, so, they're on track and all is good, right? Indeed, the Celtics have found a nice, consistent rhythm at both ends of the floor that has been a recipe for success against most teams, the good and not-so-good ones. More sees. Crunch time is Kyrie time of course, their sights are set on taking down the NBA's goalie such as Golden State, but taking care of non-contenders like the Cavs is important as well, especially if they want to pick up where the Patriots left off, click here to download the new My Teams app by NBC Sports. Receive comprehensive coverage of your teams and stream the Celtics easily on your device.